Last year's surprise won't be sneaking up on anyone this season. Rookie of the Year runner-up Donovan Mitchell and the Jazz stunned the NBA by making it all the way to the second round of the playoffs. The fifth seed in the West, heck, a postseason berth seemed improbable after starting the season 19-28. and 28. The squad suffocated their opponent. Second best defense in the league, and Rudy Gobert won Defensive Player of the Year. Playing in a conference that top to bottom improved over the summer, how much better can the Jazz get? Playing Jazz and only Jazz. For the next 30 minutes, it's NBA TV Jazz Team Preview, and it starts right now. Ten points on the season ahead for the Utah Jazz. And who better in studio to talk about defensive-minded squad than the great defender himself from the 90s, Derek Harper, with us here. We've got the NBA champ, Steve Smith. I'm Jared Greenberg. 30 minutes all about the Utah Jazz. In a bit, we'll discuss the steal of the 2018 draft. First, point number one. Guys, coming off of a devastating summer where the Jazz lost Gordon Hayward in free agency, Utah won 48 games, got up to the fifth spot in the West, bringing back virtually their entire squad. Can this team crack the top four, Smitty, and become a team that gets home court advantage in the first round of the Western Conference? You know, I, I think they have an extreme amount of talent, especially young guys when you get experience, Harp, mm -hmm. and, as you know, in the playoffs. The only thing is, nothing against the Utah Jazz. I still have them fifth because of LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers added to the Western Conference. I have them as the fourth seed, but I think it'll be a very close race. I like the way those young guys play. You usually don't have a young team that was so defensive-minded for young guys, so they got out there defensively, but I still didn't have them as a fifth seed. Yeah, Harp, though, you're talking about a Laker team who certainly has LeBron, and we know he's mm -hmm. still the greatest player in the world, but they got a lot to figure a out. Lot the of, Jazz know who they are. A lot of unproven guys, and I would agree with you that, that uh, they got a lot to figure out out in Los, Ange Los Angeles. Excuse me. But when you talk about the Jazz, I think, number one, you have to go right to their defense. They held teams to just 99 points uh, last season, and that's pretty darn good on the defensive end. But I think a lot of it rides on Mitchell, who was sensational last year. They're good defensively. You're talking about the best defensive player in the league in Gobert last year as you watch him operate a little bit, blocking shots and policing that paint. But in order for them to do it, they're going to have to get more production from their role players and I think they'll be, uh, that, that'll give them a chance to, uh, to do what they need to do. Smitty, when we talk about the Jazz tra uh, cracking the top four, you, you got to talk about the coach, Quinn Snyder, who... Underrated. Set, right. Second in, in Coach of the Year voting last year behind Dwayne Casey. But, but he seems to be a master tactician, getting the most out of what he has. He does a great job, and I think when you have trust, anytime there's an NBA coach, you can have that trust and also the intelligence and the high basketball IQ. He's been around, and he puts guys in great positions to be be very good and what I love about him he's not asking guys to be more than what they are capable right now and he's not afraid to go use that bench a lot of coaches right there they stick with that seven or eight harp yep. he will stretch it and find whatever the best combination for that game and he goes with it well guys have to buy in you know, they, they, they have to believe in the system I think that's the one thing that Utah has as a team they're the epitome of a team they play together they share the basketball Everybody knows their role. They play their roles. And when you do that, you give yourself a chance to win night in and night out. They're a good defensive team, a slow-paced team they've been over the years. But, of course, the addition of Mitchell, they've speeded up a little bit, averaging about 104 last year uh, throughout the season. So I, I like this team, especially come playoff time. All right, well, let, let's get into Donovan Mitchell. On to point number two, as I mentioned, a guy that many thought would have a, a nice NBA career. No one saw the start of his NBA career being this good. It's like they didn't miss a beat without Gordon Hayward. So versatile. How much better can Donovan Mitchell get our, this in his second season? Well, you can always get better. What do you average? 20 points, I think, mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. You can always get better, especially as a point guard in this league. And I think the one thing I'll be looking for when you start talking about this young sensation in Mitchell is whether or not he understands when to go and when to slow. I don't think as a point guard you can play at the same speed, if you would. you got to slow down. There are times in the game where I think his shot selection you can question sometimes, even though he makes a lot of threes, a lot of long shots. I just think once he slows down a tad, he's going to be a lot better getting other people involved. And, you know, when you involve other people with the talent that he has offensively, you can get yours anytime. 
And I, and I think, Harp, you brought up a great question. And the question I would ask is, he looked fantastic when Rubio went down as a point guard. Mm -hmm. What does Coach Quinn Snyder do, Jared, yeah. when you have Rubio on him? Not that he played bad. It just seemed like the Utah Jays, Jazz played faster and played a little bit more efficient and better with a Donovan Mitchell at the point guard position. Next for me is playing without the basketball for him, being more efficient, knocking down shots. And I think he's great at the cup. And I think he's pretty good at the three-point line and he can get better. That mid-range, those floaters, and being able to come off screen and rolls. Harp was so good at this. Is Harp coming to score? Is he coming to drive? Is he coming to dish? As a young guy, he's going to get better. Because when he was a rookie, I did the same thing. I turned that corner, Harp. I am going so fast. Uh -huh. And then now the defense is saying, hey, he's, oh, I have one thing to do. He's driving it. Once he gets that pace of the game and that rhythm, being able to find guys and make the defense respect when he's coming off that pick and roll, I think he's going to get much yeah, better. The, 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 the great thing about him, though, he has an uncanny ability to finish when he gets in the, in the paint. He's not afraid of size. The guy can shoot it from three, of course. He can catch and knock down three-pointers. But I think that that's not his biggest strength. His biggest strength is that, getting all the way to the rim and really clever. There you see a nice crossover and finish there during the playoffs. But this guy, the, the sky's the limit what for I love how about great he can be. He competes. Yeah. For a young guy, respect all mm -hmm. these guys that are all-stars. But when, the, when it starts to jump ball, he goes out and competes mm -hmm. against yep. everybody, and he doesn't take any prisoners. Let, let me ask you, both of you, though, who have had to play, you obviously the point guard, as many of you have played the point throughout your NBA career. If he is playing that position, we know how good the defense is around him, but can he guard the opponent? So many all-star, future Hall of Fame point guards coming at him night in, <laughs> night out. You know, that takes a lot out of you, and Derek knows that much better than me because what he did at the defensive end, but and also to be that number one scorer for them. I, right. I would love to see him off the basketball. Mm -hmm. I don't say he's very good with it, but I think that it will help him, his load, Derek, in my opinion. And also, you got to have incorporate some kind of way you have Rubio on your team. Yeah. I think for him is he can be a lockdown defender. He has athleticism. He has size. He has the girth for a two-guard position, mm -hmm. and he's athletic. So, but I think for him is it's hard. I went through it. It's trying to get through screens, Harper, much as they run yeah. pick and roll, and you keep getting hit with them big guys, it yeah. takes a lot of you on the offensive end. It, lockdown, I think, is a stretch, to be, be perfectly honest with you. I don't know if he's going to ever be a lockdown defender, but the guy can certainly defend. And being in the Western Conference, you're going to be forced to play defense. You can't take the, the, the defensive end off anywhere in the Western Conference. You're playing against the best point guards in the league in the Western Conference. Stay between me and Harp on this one so he doesn't hit me on this one. Harp's not going to hit you, man. I, I, the old I, I believe it's pretty safe to say <laughs> in 2018, 2019, defense doesn't necessarily win championships. You've got to be able to score in this mm -hmm. league. We know how good the Jazz are defensively. Second best defensive rating tied with the Spurs for fewest points per game allowed. Defensively, they're really good. Offensively, middle of the pack, 15th offensive rating, 19th points per game. Does this Jazz team rely, as we go to point three, too much on their defense? Do they have enough offense to become an elite team? You know, I thought Quinn Snyder did a good job. I think if you look at it, there was, they weren't an offensive team. They couldn't get up and down. They didn't have the type of pace. So he had these guys buy in that if we're going to win games, it's going to be defensively. And so they got to the playoffs. They got to the second round. I think they're going to have to win games different defensively. I love Favors. I love Gobert. I don't like them both on the court at the same time, the way the league is going to shooting threes and high pick and rolls. So I would love to see them play a little bit smaller, maybe Ingles at the four, or maybe have a, another guy come in and have Favors where they starting, probably uh, Gobert starting, for those guys to get a little bit more stretch and space because they're playing a little bit smaller. Jared, if they're going to be better offensively, it's gonna have to, they're going to have to get production off of their bench. I, I think that's the one thing that'll, that'll make them that'll push them to 110 points a game opposed to 104, which they averaged last year. But for, I think people underrate the value of guys coming in, understanding their role, and playing their role. If they're an offensive guy, you come in, you get buckets. If you're a defensive guy, you come in and play your role there, you can create offense that way as well. Can they play faster, Harp, in your opinion? Yeah, I think so. I, Rubio likes to push it. I mean, he's Can they play Donovan faster with favors and Gobert? No, I... Yeah, I think they can. Okay. I, I really do because you have two guards out on the floor in Rubio and Donovan that like to go. I they, love Ingles. Yeah. They, but I think they, I can outrun Ingles right now. They like to go. Where, and he's running. He's running. Can we set that up, first of all? Listen. I got Joe to, Ingles. He's running to that three-point line, though, yes. where he shot a very high field, field no, three-point percentage. So I'm talking he, about far as foot speed, though. He doesn't have to run. He has to shoot and make okay. shots. That's what, his, uh, that's what his responsibility is. Drafting, they're, they're very deep in the back, but drafting Grayson Allen, 
don't know how much playing time he gets, but, but when he gets on the court, how much of a punch can he give him? You know, because the kid can shoot the basketball, yeah. and you love Grayson Allen. Anytime you can stretch the floor, and I love him. He's always been a competitor, a little feisty, and then you can have him, a guy that shoots from deep. That's why I know Donovan Mitchell is their best player, in my opinion, but the most important until they get somebody else is Joe Ingles. They don't have enough guys that can stretch the floor and make plays other than at the rim, Rubio at the rim, Burks at the rim. You got to have some guys that can catch, knock down a three, right. and if the, if they run you off the line, can you make the next play? And that's why I think Ingles uh, did a fantastic job for them last year. You know what, Steve, you know this. Where you're drafted, what team drafts you for your ability is really important. And I think the fact that he got drafted by the Jazz, yeah. it's going to bode well for him. I think that's the perfect spot for a guy like, like uh, Allen. He plays with an edge. As long as he's not tripping people and, and, and doing those kind of and having those kind of things going on, I think he's going to be a solid pro. I really do. It'll be interesting to see him take on the Golden State Warriors, right? The team that leads the league in technical fouls okay. every year. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it gets chippy out there, man. It's just the way it goes. If you haven't seen him play, he's an excitement. He makes everything look easy. Donovan Mitchell from the backside with a rejection. This is a three. Oh, 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 oh. So get Mitchell in and scoop it all. What a night it's been for Donovan Mitchell. Playoff career high, 37 points. In fact, Donovan Mitchell, the 12th leading scorer in all of the NBA during the playoffs. On to point number five here with the Jazz projected depth chart, as we talked about in the first segment, relatively unchanged from last year. But when, when we look at this and, and you know, we, we think about maybe being aggressive during the season, Dennis Lindsay, is there something that you think the general manager of the Jazz may try and still yet acquire? Well, I think for the, when I'm looking at that roster right now, I still think you need spacing. And when you have spacing, you have guys that can knock down shots. So I think that's the one thing they need, Harp. Also, I think they got to find a way to get some easier baskets, mm -hmm. whether that's in transition or at the free throw line, some kind of way to, so the offense won't be just hard every trip down. Well, shooting, mm -hmm. even though they shot 36% from the field, from the three point line last year, I, I think you, you got to have, you got to have guys that can catch and shoot the basketball. They have a presence on the inside and go bare. And with him being in there, it should open things up yeah. for, for some more easy opportunities to your point around the perimeter in my opinion. Guys, one thing we're going to probably see a lot during the preseason and certainly in the early parts of the season is new points of emphasis this year for the officials is, is about freedom of movement. The, the NBA wants a more flow, a flowing game, right? Mm -hmm. Free flowing game. And so that, that has to do with the ball handler as we've seen over the years, Derek Harper rule, <laughs> as well as off the ball too, the clutching, the grabbing, allowing the offensive player to go from point A to point B without being impeded. So on one hand, we think about the Jazz defense. Maybe that right. hurts them. But offensively, that may help Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, it is. And I would say, um, let's show a little example. You go out there, Jared, as the point guard. Obviously. Back in the day, we used to have these plays, Harper. As you know, you yeah. come off. Floppy up, floppy And first down. of all, offensively, if Derek Harper is guarding me on the offensive end, and he's not allowed to clutch me, right. now Harper has to just basically. Or even stay close, close to, to me. He yeah. has to react to what I'm doing, whether I go here or not. It's a reaction. So with Donovan Mitchell, as good as he is, and if he can get off quickly, and you throw this bounce pass right here, I think because of now the rules right now, Harp, he can swing through, take a shot. Right. But when we look at on the defensive end what they used to do, right. you used let's to go ground. back down we here. You go back down here. Let's go back down here. And you were talking about a little push off and getting away from the defense. I could lock when I was in the league and when we were mm -hmm. in the league. I could lock in here and basically force you one way. I wouldn't give you this way and that way. I would get up on you and kind of force you mm -hmm. this way. And all you this played against Rondo Black, one, yes. of the best one of the best at this, freeing himself off of physical play. Yes. Right. You push right. off, you get to where you want to get, and you knock down easy shots coming off the of down screens. And I think, obviously, now when you start to look, Jared, there's a lot of pick and rolls, a high pick and rolls. They use that a lot. You're going to be my guy setting the pick. Okay. So freedom of movement. Derek Harper is guarding me, a fantastic defender. Thank but you, obviously, man. I give a, a little bit of advantage because he can't put his hands on me right, right now, whether right. it's the hand check or here. And back in the day, me and Hart was talking about it off. Yeah. I never pretty much was set up no. like this. Everything was right, right here. Right. So now, Derek, he'll talk about the defensive standpoint. Right. But if I'm talking about the offense, if I have Hart right here, I can go left. Right. I can go right easier. Right. But now, the screen, wait, whoa, whoa. Okay, Jared. <laughs> that's okay, good. Jared. That's good. That's Foul, good. but that's okay, Jared. <laughs> now, this is 90s. So, that's exactly right. right? Let's you talk about now. Derek on the defensive end. Well, in, 
like you just talked about, Smitty, I'm not allowed to touch you. So you can face up. You can go left. You can go away from the screen. You can mm -hmm. go to the screen. In the past, I would want to get up on him and work, fight my way over the top of a screen, knowing that I'm going to get a little show after uh, Donovan gets off, uh, comes off the screen. You're going to show. The big is going to show. But if I could put my hand here you see that? and guide him somewhere. It wasn't somewhere. just a hand, though, Jared. That was more <laughs> than a hand. But also, look at the difference. Before, I'm here. Right. And I'm back here. Right. Now I'm more apt. Enemy. One I'm more, excuse me, sir, I'm more apt to run right into the screen, being yes. off of the offensive player, opposed to being up and in him. Is what Coach Riley used to talk about. Get up, up, up in him, and you can kind of control. You set the screen, and look what I change now. I'm yeah. here, Hart. Right. Right. And that puts the defense at an advantage. Thank you for not running into me. Oh no, I wouldn't do that, Jerry. Appreciate that. You I like pretty, you. You're a good job. You get hard. You didn't like Harper something? You hit Hart pretty hard. Grew up a net fan. <laughs> On to point number nine on our Utah Jazz season preview show, how good they were defensively last year. And guys, Rudy Gobert comes into the season saying he wants to be one of the great players in NBA history, confident guy. He, he told reporters recently that he, he thinks he hasn't scratched the surface that he can do. He, he feels like this year is going to be his best year by far. People have been critical of his offensive game, only mm -hmm. about seven or eight touches per game. We, we can debate on who is the best player. I think most would go mm -hmm. Donovan Mitchell. I would. But, mm -hmm. Harp, is Rudy Gobert their most important player? My sentiments on that, I, I would say yes, because here are the things that he does. He, he anchors the paint. Uh, he, he keeps people from getting easy baskets. He rebounds. He defends. He was defensive player of the year. You couple all of those things together, he's an improved a very, he's improving on the offensive end of the floor as well. And his numbers might not show it. Maybe they will this year. But I just think when you think of all the things that he brings night in and night out, his full body of work, he, he's definitely the most important. Yeah, I'm with Harp. I, I think um, I'm anxious to see his offense. And, I, and I, I look at the young fella and say, just don't try to do too much. Come out there, offensive rebound, get you one uh, jump hook in the post or whatever that post move is. But – Really rely on that defense and rebounding the basketball. I still want to see him take his rebounding numbers way up. I got him in, and Joe Ingles as the most important players for wow. Utah Jazz. See, I, I think I, I respectfully disagree. I think he's going to have to score. You think so? That's what we were just talking about, uh -huh. how they need more offense. I think he's one of those guys, given the opportunity. You throwing, know, it right off, to him, throwing it right into him? I, I really do. I, mm -hmm. I think he's at that point now with there not being a lot of traditional centers there are a lot of small he plays against a lot of power forwards right with his size I, I think if you could get 15 points from him that's where that 104 well, goes to one, 107 108 I want to follow up from something that Lee said from the starters in our last okay. segment there's a difference between being a surprise team that nobody sees coming and now this year the expectation is that an issue for a team that is so young to play under those circumstances you know, I, I think, Harvey, yeah, they're young in age as far as experience, but I, I just love the way they approach the game. They approach the game to me like veterans, and the way they won games was defensively, so yeah. they can go out there mm -hmm. and muck up the game and make it ugly. I and, and I think they are up for the challenge of having Quinn Snyder as a leader. Also, they're young guys, the way they compete. Yes, it'll be a bullseye on you, but I think they're up for the challenge. Snyder, that's the key. Yeah. And I know it's the players that play night in and night out. They're the ones that be, can't become complacent. However, again, they believe in their coach. They believe in their system. They have a lot of positives. And how do they win? They win as a unit. Easily, if a rookie comes into this league, Steve, you know that, easily guys are going to kind of give him a second look. Mm -hmm. In his first year, averaging 20 points, taking all of the shots, things of that nature, you don't get that from the Jazz. They play to win. They play with each other. They have a lot of cohesion but you said as a best, basketball and I totally agree. Their bench. Yes. They can, their bench can be a little bit They're better. Well, let, let's talk about predictions then. Mm -hmm. They win 48 last year. 49 and a half is the number I'm going to give you for this upcoming season. Point 10. More or less than 49 and a half. Just a little. I think, I think they win around 46 games, 47 games. So that's under. I'm going under. I'm going under for sure. I, I think what they did this past season really w w was pretty amazing after losing Hayward uh, to the Celtics. And uh, who do you got in uh, – a contest and uh, running here is faster. Him or Joe Engel? <laughs> Smitty. Smitty's my boy. Come on. <laughs> I'm going. I'm